how much unnecessary code is showing in your page builder's output. Today, we're comparing six popular page builders, Oxygen, Breakdance, Divi, Elementor, Framer, and Webflow to see which one has the cleanest output on the front end. We're focusing on raw code, not performance or speed or UI or anything like that. What is output by the page builder into your browser? This is Kevin, let's dive in. In our tests, we're gonna be ranking the page builders from best to worst according to insight from services like Google. For div soup or divception, we want to be sure our pages have the lightest document object model or DOM possible and don't lead to other issues. For reference, Google recommends pages contain less than 1500 DOM elements, a tree depth of less than 32 elements, and less than 60 direct children elements per parent element. When it comes to scripts, Lighthouse flags each file with more than 20 kibibytes of unused code, and we also want our files to be used as much as possible. For this test, we'll consider any script that is more than 95% unused to be an unused file. When we're scoring out each of the tests, we'll award five points to the first place, four points to second place, and so on. We're going to start simple by adding a single heading tag to each page builder. This is a simple experiment to see how many elements exist between the body of our HTML and our heading tag. So first, let's start off with oxygen. We have our text element here that is set to an H1. Then we have breakdance with a section and a heading. Next is Elementor, which has a container and a heading. Now we have Divi, which we can see already has a heading and a row and a section. Then we have Framer, which we can see with our heading here. And last, we have Webflow, which we can see with a heading and the body. So now let's check out our output on the front end. We'll go to a private browser because we don't want to account for any logged in information, such as the WordPress admin or Webflow has some extra scripts that it loads when you're logged in. We don't want any of that. We just want to see our layout. We'll start with Oxygen and we'll go ahead and open the developer tools and we'll select our heading element. And we can see that within our element from our H1 to our body is one. We go right from our H1 to our body. That's exactly what we have in the builder. We can see it right here in the back end. We have an H1 and that's exactly what shows up on the front end. Next, we have Breakdance. So let's go ahead and select our heading. We can see that in this case, we have three elements until we get to our body. Now let's go to Elementor and we'll go ahead and select our heading element and we'll count eight elements from the heading to the body. This is our first case of deception and we can see this because we have an H2 element and then we have a div followed by another div and all of these divs are the exact same size. Ideally, this should just be a heading with no divs. Up next, we have Divi and we'll find that we have a whopping 13 elements between our heading and our body for a simple heading element on a page. If we look at the divs, we'll see that the heading has an H1 tag and two divs specific just for that element. Let's segue over to Framer and we'll count four elements on the front end, which is great. Okay, so now we're on Webflow, our very last one. And we can see that there is an H1 and a body tag which is the same as what Oxygen had. And let's go ahead and look at the back end, and we can see that our H1 and our body are there. Awesome. With our simple layout complete, let's move on to a more complex layout. In this layout, we have a slider followed by an icon box, followed by a tab section in each of our page builders. We didn't add any images to any of these designs because we wanted to keep things as lightweight as possible and not make them overbearing with content. So first we have oxygen here and everything looks great. So let's go ahead and see how many elements it takes to get to our body. So we'll select our slide one text and we can count a total of five elements when using a slider and oxygen. If we check the back end, we'll see four elements, which is perfect as oxygen doesn't show the body within the structure panel. Now onto breakdance. And in breakdance's case, we'll count a total of 10 elements. So we have a slight jump from what we saw in Oxygen. We'll move over to Elementor Spider and we'll count 14 elements from our heading to our body. So there is definitely some deception going on here with Elementor sliders. Okay, so now let's check out Divi setup. And here is where we have the highest number, 17 elements for our heading in our slider. Next, we'll check out Framer 
and Framer comes in at 10 elements from the heading to the body of the slider. This is the same as what we saw within Breakdance. Last, we'll check out Webflow, which has four elements. This is exactly what we have in the back end as well, so that's great. So with our deception averages, we found that Oxygen and Webflow both came in first. Then we had a tie with Breakdance and Framer. Then we had Elementor in fifth and Divi in last. So let's go ahead and look at Oxygen. And within Oxygen, we had three slides in the back end. Now within our slider element on the front end, we can see that we have three slides. So that's perfect. Next, let's go ahead and go to Breakdance. Now, if we check the front end, we can see that we have our three slides, but there are also two additional slides that Breakdance has added. And these two extra slides are used for navigation when showing the slide before and after the current slide. Now let's go to Elementor, and this is where we really noticed an issue. We can see that there are a whopping nine slides. So for whatever reason, Elementor adds two extra slides for every slide you have in the back end. So this is really going to blow up your page size a little, especially if you're using images or something else resource heavy. Next, let's head over to Divi. Interestingly enough, this is one area where Divi actually did really good. It only has three slides on the front end. Next, let's go ahead and look at Framer. And if we check our slides, we'll see that there are actually 12 slides on the front end. So this takes the cake from Elementor, and that means Framer adds three additional slides for every slide you add on the back end. Now, this can be a big issue because of the two key reasons where DOM size can impact your site. First, if a page has more than 1,500 elements, it can start to have an impact. Second, if a parent element has more than 60 children, it can also start to have an impact. So in Framer's case, our current slide contains four elements, and that slide is being duplicated four times, meaning each slide we add in Framer adds up to 16 elements. If your slides had more content, this number could be even higher. At the current rate, a slider with 90 slides would hit that 1500 limit. It might seem like a high number of slides, but that could be nothing for a photography website, and it doesn't even account for any other content on the page. The bigger concern here is the parent to child ratio. With 60 children being the max suggested, you'll hit that with 15 slides. For Elementor, that becomes 20 slides. Last, we have Webflow. We'll see that there are three slides, which is exactly what we want. For our slide section, we had Divi, Oxygen, and Webflow in first with no extra slides added to the front end. Breakdance added two additional slides, Elementor duplicated each slide three times, and Framer came in last by duplicating each slide four times. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to check the amount of CSS and JavaScript files that are loaded and used on each page. We're currently using the Coverage tab and Developer Tools to do this, and we have Oxygen loaded right here, and we can see that we're using 5.1 kilobytes of 13.8 kilobytes altogether. So 37% of our files are being used, but the big factor here is we want to see how many kilobytes are loaded, and Oxygen is loading only 13.8, so that's super light, that's really, really good. And we'll just refresh the page real quick to make sure that's still up to date, perfect. So let's head over to Breakdance, and we'll refresh the page really quick, and we'll see that we're using 45% of 169 kilobytes. Now let's go over to Elementor and we'll see that we have 403 kilobytes and we're only using 39% of that. Now let's head over to Divi. Again, we'll see 381 kilobytes loaded with 28% being used. Next, we'll head over to Framer and we'll see that we have 814 kilobytes with 49 being used. And last, we have Webflow. So let's load up Webflow. We can see that we're loading 215 kilobytes, and we're only using 25% of that. This was for the simple layouts. Let's go ahead and look at the more complex layouts that we had. So here we are with Oxygen, and we can see that our load jumps up to 189 kilobytes. The usage is still about the same. Next, let's take a look at Breakdance. We can see that we're now using 371 kilobytes, so there's a jump there. We'll head over to Elementor where we can see we now have 628 kilobytes 
and 41% of that is being used. We'll take a look at Divi next, and we can see that we have 431 kilobytes being loaded on the page this time. We'll hop over to Framer one more time. We'll see we're using 864 kilobytes. So Framer seems to have the least amount of increase so far, but it's still loading way more than all of our other pages. And last, we have Webflow, which we can see is loading 228 kilobytes. Now that we've checked everything on the coverage tab, we'll begin the three different scores we'll use for this section. First is the lowest CSS and JS file size on page load. Second is the amount of CSS and JS used on page load. And last is the total files that are considered unused. And again, this is gonna be anything that is 95% unused or higher. We've averaged both the simple and the complex pages together. So let's go over the results. Next for our payload or the amount of files that are served to our website, Oxygen came in first, followed by Breakdance. Then we had Webflow, Divi, Elementor, and Framer and last. Now for the average usage of all of these files, we found that Framer came in first, followed by Breakdance. Then we had Elementor, followed by Oxygen, Webflow, and then last we had Divi. And for the amount of unused files, so this is any file that was 95% or more unused, we had Breakdance with the lowest amount. Then we had Framer and Oxygen tied for second, followed by a tie between Divi and Webflow. And in last place, we had Elementor. So we've just tested six page builders to see which ones have the best HTML output. We found that Divi typically adds the most additional elements on a page, and we found that Framer and Elementor have an issue with additional sliders, which could really impact performance if you're using images or other heavier content. With all of our tests complete, let's now go over our final scores. We found that Oxygen came in first with 21 points, Breakdance came in second with 18 points, Webflow came in third with 16 points, Framer came in fourth with 12 points, Divi came in fifth with nine points, and Elementor came in last place with six points. We weren't judging based on designs or speed or optimization. We were judging based on whether or not this was clean code output on the front end, and how well you can maintain and understand that code as you can continue to build your site.